Hi, this is Casey, and I'm from Blue Marble, and today I'll be covering a brief overview of some of the main PPM features. I'll be working in SAP, on SAP's new platform. Um, I'll be using NetWeaver Business Client. I'll be using a little bit of Screen Personas. I'll show you Fiori, and we're just going to work through some of the main uh, features of creating a project within a portfolio and then initiating that project and showing the integration between the S4 HANA system and the back end of SAP. What we're seeing here is the NetWeaver business client and these would it would contain transactions per users that they would have uh, similar to authorizations for transactions in um, the older R3 blue screen system. Uh, this is just a more friendly user atmosphere. So if I wanted to go into my commercial project overview, I would go in here and just simply click that to drop down. I'd go home and click home. That would take me here. This is Screen Personas. And the great thing about Screen Personas is it's highly customizable and very user friendly. Uh, users don't have to enter transaction codes here. Um, they can be set up as tabs and tiles across the screen. And so all of their authorizations from common T codes they might use every day, uh, they can use them here and have direct access to it from one home screen. You can also see that mobile apps or things like My Mail or maybe your company support can be added. Uh, again, this is all done through authorization per the user. So we'll start off here by just creating a proposal. If I were a user, I'd just come down here and choose this for the time being. I'm, I've already got it loaded, so I'm going to go right here. So we're going to go in here and create a portfolio item. The screen we were just looking at is the Fiori front end. So that's a cockpit that the users will have that will be customized. And each of those tiles takes them into either a transaction, a fact sheet item, or some sort of analytic uh, that is provided on the new S4 HANA platform. So today we'll go ahead and just create a quick proposal. You can see here we've got our portfolios. We can select which portfolio we're going to work in. We're going to work in a capital portfolio today. And we're going to enter just some header data on the uh, new portfolio item that we're going to propose. So we'll go ahead and enter some information. We'll call this 998. I've set up some previous in information. We'll see some MDC information as I work through here. The naming schema and item IDs can are all customizable. We're going to create a proposal, and we will call it just a water treatment plant. We can choose a priority, put a budget on here. And again, notice that's just a forecasted budget. We'll choose today, and we'll make it a quick project. Uh, these lists are customizable for the dropdown. So we've got our basic data set ready. We can save it, and you'll see our portfolio item proposal has been saved. Next step in the process might be to analyze the proposal. So the user would come here and choose their Analyze Proposal tab. Uh, just again, for the sake of processing, we've got them loaded already. You can see in my list, I've got my 998 MDC. We can open that up. And from here, we can look at our proposal. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick risk assessment on here. So we'd go into Additional Information. We go down here and we just complete these quick questionnaires. We're going to make this a very low impact uh, pro project. And so we're just going to choose anything that would create a low impact project. So we've got our first one done. You can see our probability of success is high. We've got 
plenty of money. We've got great contractors. All our materials already pre-ordered. Lots of labor issue, or lots of labor to have, have. No security issues, and no societal changes or risks. Okay, what you can see here is we have a very low risk, uh, high probability of success. From here, we're going to switch over and jump into the financial information, and we're going to enter just some base values here. We'll enter a net present value. We'll go with 200000 We're going to enter a launch cost of 150000 and a development cost of... 50,000. From here, we can go ahead and save the project and move on to our next steps. One thing to note would be our current status. Our proposal is in the middle of our submitted status. This would be where maybe a user would send it off for approval or possibly uh, if they have the authorization, approve it themselves. So if a user was going to approve the proposal, they'd come out to their home screen. They would come in here. They would approve a decision point. We'd go in. We'd find the project that we are specifically looking or the proposal we're looking for. And we can review the front end of it here, make sure it's the correct one that we want. And we can go ahead and hit approve. And if we'd like to, we can actually enter notes for review. Now that we've gone ahead and approved the first stage of this uh, proposal, we can go to review and initiate project. And we'll just have to find our project in our list. And the key takeaway here is the status change from our proposal submitting. Uh, what a user would move into next, which we're going to skip over for the sake of time in this presentation, is possibly some financial planning, um, any types of relationships, setting up documents or notes if they need to connect them to this, just the different ins and outs of this proposal as it moves through the proposal process. Once we get done with that, it would go into the investment committee for review and approval there. So once the review process is over after the planning and information has been added to the proposal, the user can save the information. Obviously, we've backed out here. They can re-enter, and then they can see that the investment committee has reviewed and approved it. And now we're at a close to final stage, which is the go, no go decision. So from here, the user could make one last uh, review before they make their final go, no go decision for approval. And if they wanted to do a review, you can go in, you can search your, uh, your project or your proposal, and then you can end up picking what we call the scoreboard. And what you're able to see here is that uh, it's still a good choice to, that we're going to follow through with it. It's a low-risk project with a high probability of commercial success. So we'll go ahead and put it in for a final review process for approval. And then what will happen after that is we will, uh, this is where the integration with the back end comes in, and the project will be automatically created uh, upon that final approval. We'll go do a few final steps, and we'll get a project out of it. So from here, we're going to go into change process. And you see we've got our item type. We had put it in as a proposal at the beginning. We're going to go ahead and change it to a capital project construction. And we'll save from here. Next, we'll go ahead and we will choose create project upon saving. We'll do a new plant construction project. 
sorry about that quick stitch, but we'll go here and what we're going to do is perform a refresh on our screen. We'll save first. So upon saving and doing our refresh, you can see that we've got created here. We can go up to project and we can choose our PS project. You'll see this is the uh, integration between the two. And we've got our project builder, which will display our project. And this is a very similar screen probably to some SAP users if they've been in project systems before. I look forward to talking to you more in detail about your projects and your portfolio soon. Uh, for, for more information, you can contact us at sap-bmc.com. Thanks for your time.